little brother is more of a than you. That's all I gotta say in your face. And you too, come here, little. I'm out here by myself. I'm out here by my self. Ain't no one around me. Y'all got nunchucks out here, bro. Wait, me and you were fighting? I think oh, so. I thought, it, I thought it was Nick Ireland. My bad. Oh, you think Nick won that fight? A hundred million times. Do you think Nick Ireland beat Ryan? Because there's a Ooh, big controversy million. about that Ireland, whatever kid. Up Ryan in that YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. For uh, sure. We watched the video, the breakdown, and everything. Yeah, dude, the Iron One can beat Ryan. Uh, Without a doubt. Like 100%. There, sh there shouldn't have even been a third round. I thought he won the first two clear. Literally staring me straight in the face, saying, like, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. Dude, I'm gonna beat your ass right here in the street. Like, your boys are in trouble if you don't myself. give me that camera right now. Like, Before we get into it, I wanna say this. We're making this video to expose the truth about our experience with Austin McBroom, his brother-in-law, his brother, and social gloves as a whole. And we're gonna be trying to keep this as unbiased as possible and just lay out the facts of what happened. Everything we've done in our whole careers is real. I can't say the same for the McBrooms. We did not want to have to make this video. But with the actions that have gone down and the things that have happened in the past couple weeks, we have been left with no other choice but to make this video. You guys know us, we've been doing YouTube for about five years and in our entire career, we have stayed out of drama completely. So this is very unlike us, but because of what has been happening recently, we felt that this video was necessary. If you guys have been following mine and Nick's boxing journey, our boxing story on our vlog channel, then you guys know a little bit, but you guys do not know the full truth. If you wanna head over there and get a little backstory of what we're talking about, click the link in the description, click right up here, we'll link those videos. But basically boys, Austin McBroom, his brother-in-law, his brother and social gloves, behind the scenes have just been very unprofessional, very disrespectful there's, and- There's been a lot of stuff going on that we've been told to be silent about literally we've been told to take down videos and we've taken down videos and uh, it's come to the point where we have to we just have to make this video we, come we, out about have, our experience of what has happened they've done things that we shouldn't have even let them do they've disrespected us they, and they've, they've been, ignored us they've disrespected our time and it's been over and over they're ignoring all of our texts all of our dms and uh they get what they want and then they stop responding basically and we have so much to dive into so much to get into especially with austin mcbroom especially with his brothers and especially with social buzz man to start it off, we're gonna take you guys to the very beginning of this whole boxing journey for us. We're just gonna brush over the majority of the important details so you guys get a gist of what's going on. It started about a couple months ago, me and Ricky, we hear the whole YouTube versus TikTok or boxing match, and we're like, yo, let's try to get a spot on there because on the card at the time, there was an empty space for Taylor Holder and an empty space for Danny Duncan. And we're like, yo, maybe I'll fight Taylor Holder. So we make a video calling out Taylor Holder to like, yo, put us on the card against Taylor Holder. Nothing happens with that. Social Gloves posts on their Instagram. This screenshot right here, they say they're adding six new fighters. Six new fighters. Spoiler alert, they did not end up adding six fighters. But back to the story. So they post that Instagram story and me and Ricky were like, yo, we have a chance. So we hit them up in the DMs. We start, we start going back and forth, I believe. So after going back and forth in the DMs, I get a text from someone that works at Social Gloves on March 31st. He's like, yo, it's from Social Gloves. You've been picked as one of the finalists to have a chance to be on the card. We're gonna be hosting a fight night event on April 10th in Los Angeles. So 10 days from that text was sent. 10 days, bro. Literally gave us 10 days notice. Exactly, and we never boxed in our life before. Ever, bro. And they're just like, yo, in 10 days. They gave us a little bit of details. They said you're gonna be fighting a couple times a night and they're gonna be one minute rounds. Spoiler alert again, they changed everything at the last second. So we get that text, me and Ricky start training for like a week prior to flying out there. We fly out there on, I think the 7th. We're getting ready for the fight. And then it's the day of the fight and we still don't even know where we're fighting or who we're fighting. They were very unprofessional about the way they conducted everything. It was, uh, it seemed like it was all put together at the last second, but that doesn't matter too much because 
that's not where we're getting at. We're just telling you guys the little backstory. We go through the whole event, and then of course at the championship round, it was me versus Ryan Johnson, aka Austin McBroom's brother-in-law. And you guys have seen the footage for yourselves. A lot of people saying I took the first round and the second round, or either the first round I won and the second round was a tie. There, sh there shouldn't even been a third round. I thought he won the first two clear. He landed more of the big shots too. Wait, me and you were fighting? I oh, think I so. Thought it, I thought it was Nick Ireland. My bad. Oh. Uh, I thought that's who I was fighting. Oh, no, I yeah. just watched the YouTube video. All right, all right, all right. You saw Ryan fight Nick. You think Nick won that fight? A hundred million times. And you would fight Nick Ireland over Ryan Johnson? I would not want to fight Nick Ireland over Ryan. You think they should go back to the drawing boards and whatever brother that whipped his in that YouTube boxing match should get that spot because he got his whooped. Oh, you're talking about Nick Ireland. So you think Nick Ireland beat Ryan? Because there's a one big controversy million, about one that. Million, I don't even know the kid. I don't even about know the kid, that. but right, that Ireland whatever kid f***ed up Ryan in that YouTube. Oh yeah, no, no, he did for sure. Right. We watched the video, the breakdown, and everything. Yeah, dude. If we were being technical, the Ireland kid beat Ryan. Bro, without a doubt, like 100. A lot of people saying that even Austin McBroom's brother-in-law himself said it, and he was the one fighting you. Roll the clip. A lot of people are saying that um, especially the whole fan base that Nick has are saying, clearly because he lost, right? People can't really take losses, but literally that's what it is, bro, because what happened was this, is that yes, it was supposed to be a two round, two round fight, but first round you did win and you did get me good, bro, I'm not gonna lie. I'm always gonna tell people the truth and you did, you did get me the first round, but the second round was a tie. And if you ask anyone around the ring, everyone could agree that it was a tie, bro. That's why they call for a third round. I, I, I put a show for everybody, bro, the whole night. That's what people want to see. They want to put the show. See the show. And that's what people want to see. 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 My boy Ryan posted this clip, said Nick won the first round, and the second round was a tie. So in that case, why did you even go a third round? That means Nick was up one to zero, and we screen recorded that luckily because your boy Ryan took that down right away because he realized how dumb that sounded. He literally admitted that you won, and he was like, oh shoot, I shouldn't post that, and he took it down. And those are just the facts, bro. We have video proof of that, and there's a lot more video proof within this video. So then the next day, we're just out in LA, walking around, we got our suitcases because we're only there for a few days. Don't know where we're staying next. And Hollywood Fix comes up to us and he starts asking us about the fight. And uh, that is when we spill some beans and we're like, yo, we watch back the footage. And after watching it back, it just seemed, it seemed kind of weird that they pushed for that third round when I, I, it seemed like I was up in the first two. And I went up against Austin McBroom's brother-in-law. And then we are supposed to go two rounds, but ended up going three rounds. They added a third round for literally like no reason. If you watch the footage, I feel like I've won in the first two rounds. It just seemed like it was a very, very weird coincidence that they happened to go a third round and it was Austin McBroom judging the fight for his brother-in-law. Because keep in mind, all those YouTubers that were fighting that night, we were pretty much fighting for a six-figure paycheck to be on the actual card. It wasn't just fighting for nothing. So if you're fighting for that, it should have been a little more official. So then Austin McBroom ends up seeing the video of me and Ricky on the Hollywood Fix and uh, I get a little text from someone one that was training with Austin and he tells me he's like yo would you guys be down to spar Austin this week no cameras just for fun and I say shoot at his crib says at the same gym and I say honestly if I'm not gonna be in the fight I don't know so everything is all good up to oh, there and then I get an audio message from my boy that's training with Austin and he says he says this damn bro you definitely just like said all right I'm down to spar him for fun because he got like sus after you were like, put me on the car. Because uh, I just read him what you said because he's like right next to me. But damn it. I don't think he liked your video on Hollywood Fix. He said he was going to say, like, oh, I'll put him on your story. Or, he said, I'll put I'll put them on my story and say, like, come spar me. If you're decent, I'll put you on the card. But they didn't like how you're. So pretty much from that audio message, Austin McBroom was mad because he saw the video of me and Ricky on the Hollywood Fix where we pretty much just gave our side of the story, said it seemed kind of fishy that Ryan Johnson won because of an additional third round that they added when he's Austin McBroom's brother-in-law. And then from that audio message, you could hear that Austin McBroom was apparently upset that I didn't want to spar him when it would make no sense for me to spar him because me and Ricky, we were out in LA, burning 
burning up money every single day that we're there. We're only in LA for like a couple days, so I don't want to waste the whole day sparring someone when I'm not even boxing anyone. It would just be a waste of time for me. So I literally text Honestly, if I'm not gonna be in the fight, I don't know, man. Didn't even didn't even say no. And Austin McBroom was mad that I didn't want to spar him. But got, there's nothing in it for me at all. He got really upset that Nick didn't do exactly what he wanted when he wanted it, basically. So I literally text and say, damn, bruh. He saw me box the other night. Not much else I have to prove. Just laying it out there, straight facts. Then I say, tell him we're not in town that long, bruh. We're trying to do some other stuff other than just box if we're not even gonna get on the card. Tell him that if you're with him. Not hostile at all. I literally tell we like him. We were just saying how we felt. He knows I'm decent too. He saw me fight three fights that night. Everyone in that room saw it. No cap. So this is where things start to get interesting, my friends. We hear that Austin McBroom is upset with both of us for pretty much no reason. And me and Ricky were like, yo, let's try and squash the beef and handle this like men. We want to keep it peaceful. We don't want anyone to be mad. We've never had beef with literally anyone in our entire careers on YouTube. So we were like, yo, let's just handle it. Talk it out like men and we can keep it peaceful. So we asked the person who was training with Austin McBroom if we can talk to him. He says no. So then we're like, yo, we got to go talk to him in person so we can settle this. Cause we don't want no beef, man. We, we don't are cool no with everyone. We've always been cool with pretty much everyone because we don't want no drama. We don't want no beef. So what we do is the next day, we know where Austin's training. He's been posting it everywhere and we knew who he was training with. So we're like, yo, let's just pull up, try to talk it out like men. So that's exactly what we did. We pulled up to his boxing gym before he got there and we're just kind of waiting around and then all of a sudden we see Austin McBroom pull up. And right as he pulls up, the first thing that I say to him is, hey bro, we just want to keep it peaceful, talk things out and make sure that we're cool with each other. But right off the jump, this man came at us hostile, was calling us clowns. He was like this close from my face, bro. Just like all up in it, being hostile. Yeah, from like pretty much the jump. Right from the jump and right when he started yelling at Nick, I was like, yo bro, and man, we just want to talk it out, keep it peaceful literally nothing's happened so far and we just want to talk this out and he was relentless my friends he was right up in Nick's face just talking smack saying I you guys disrespected me online you guys are clowns talking about that you and your brother are cry babies talking about this all online when keep in mind we wanted to talk about this to him before and keep it peaceful so he left us no choice but to make the video online when in reality, I was trying to talk to him man to man. He wouldn't even give me the chance, the time of day to talk to him. What I was trying to do was pull up the video that his brother-in-law, Ryan Johnson, filmed on Instagram, but ended up deleting. First round, you did win, and you did get me good, bro. I'm not going to lie. I'm always going to tell people the truth, and you did you did get me the first round. But the second round was a tie. I was trying to show him that video that I had, but I couldn't even show him that because he was just blabbing in my face. He literally would not, he would not let anyone else talk. He was running his mouth so fast that you couldn't even get a word in there. And he was just repeating, repeating, and saying a bunch of stuff like, yo boys, you guys are clowns, cry babies online, y'all made that video, you disrespected me, and we're just like letting him talk. But then, this is where things get to another level, and I think we have to bring in a witness that was there, our cameraman, the legend himself, Conor McGregor's son, my friends. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome. And this guy, if there's one thing this guy does, is he tells the truth. So while this is happening, and Austin is right up in Nick's face talking a bunch of smack, Evan starts recording just in case something goes down because it starts getting heated and literally five or six dudes from Austin's boxing gym walk outside. One of them even had batons in their hand and it just seemed like something might go down. So Evan was rolling just in case something did go down, we would have proof and just for our safety alone. That's why he started recording for safety alone. I keep, I tried to keep it down low. So things are getting more and more heated. Austin's getting louder. I'm trying to talk back to him, but I can't even talk to him. Things are just getting more and more heated more people coming out of the gym and then that is when things just took a turn for the worst because Austin sees out the corner of his eye he sees our boy Evan filming and he's like yo you're recording me 
and that's when it just went crazy. Yeah, so I was filming down low, Austin sees me, and the ref that was there the night before. Literally, the ref that refed me versus Ryan Johnson, aka Austin McBroom's brother-in-law, championship fight, that ref was at the gym that night training with Austin, and he was coming after us. Like, he was on Austin's team training him, the whole thing, and it, it, we, were just, we, we couldn't believe that he was there. It was like, yo, that was literally the ref that was in the ring the other night. So, just seeing that, just rubbed me the wrong way, and it was like, oh, okay. I didn't know it was Landon at first. I just see him with his hands taped up, ready to box. He comes out, along with like four other guys, the ref, Austin. This dude that they're... literally had batons in his hand yeah, came out. Yeah. Big dude, like yeah, big. Huge. All those dudes were probably about the same size, if not bigger than us. So, oh, we were outnumbered yeah. three to six or seven. Yeah, three to six or seven, and we were in the back alleyway of a boxing literally. gym. Literally, a back alleyway in LA. It was not looking good for the bus. So they come at us, they start yelling, yo, get off the property, get off the boxing gym property. So I'm backing up with the camera because I don't want them to come at me and grab the camera. And so I'm yelling like, okay, I'm getting off the property, I'm doing what you wanted. And then they start following us, and that's when Austin takes the lead and starts filming. Exactly, on his phone. yeah, exactly. Literally, Austin McBroom takes his phone out and starts recording me, Ricky, and Evan backing away, even though one of the guys that worked at the gym was saying, get off our property, it's private property. That's why all of us are backing away. Not because we're afraid of Austin, because the guy said, get off the property, and we're being respectful, so we're walking off the property. But Austin McBroom decides to take his phone out and record it, literally shove it in my face. Here's the video clip. Both got dropped by Ryan. You got dropped by Ryan, and you got dropped by Ryan. You got beat up, yep, in your face, and you got beat up. And this cameraman right here is a ass dude, because he's sitting here filming us on some thirsty sh You guys should be thanking Social Gloves you got invited to the event rather than running and crying to the whole internet. And your little brother is more of a than you, that's all I gotta say in your face. And you too, come here little I'm out here by my self, ain't no one around me. I'm out here fighting for millions of dollars. I'm fighting for millions of dollars. I'm not worried about you. I'm as you can see, I'm completely unfazed by this man. Ain't, ain't no one, one afraid of him. Ain't no one was scared of Austin McBroom. Nobody's scared of him. It was the five or six guys that literally had hand wraps and batons in their hand, ready to box. And then Austin McBroom has the audacity to pretend that he is by himself. By himself, he's like, yo, I'm by myself and these these crybabies are running away. And in that moment, I knew what he was doing. I knew that he was planning to release that to Drama Alert, planning to release that to FouseyTube, all the drama channels, and that's exactly what he did. He was painting a picture, saying that how tough he was, walking us down in a back alleyway by himself. Little did he know, your boy won't hit Rick, pulled out my phone, I went live and exposed him on the spot and showed his whole posse, his whole crew his behind whole him. His entourage was behind him while he's saying, I'm alone, I'm alone. And it's like, bruh. I'm out here by myself. I'm out here by my f***ing self. Ain't no one around me. Y'all got nunchucks out here, bro. Take that cap off of your head, bro. You capping hard. Literally, Austin McCap, bro. I don't know why they call him McBro. This whole time, I have the camera. I have it down by my side. I'm trying to get clips of them. I don't want to be holding it up super obvious because then it just like, it's in their face and it's obnoxious. So I'm trying to keep it low. I'm rolling the whole time. So there's audio. I'm getting numerous people's feet in the background. Oh, everything yeah. as they chase us down the street, down like a block to another street. And then that's when they come around the corner. Ricky's going live on Instagram and... I literally thought we were getting jumped, so I was like, yo, I'm going live, and at least someone is going to screen record this. Luckily, one of y'all did out there. Shout out to you guys coming in clutch for the buds. Someone screen record this. We're going to be jumped by Austin McBroom, bro. Bro, we don't care about virality. We stop posting. You got like 12 people deep, bro. Y'all got 12 people. We're just trying to be nice. Everything's fine. Y'all got nunchucks out here, bro. But Austin was just making threats. They were like, yo, we're gonna beat you up. They were literally making threats at oh, Evan because yeah. he had the camera. Oh, yeah. And also, I gotta clear this up because this is a lie that I'm pretty sure Austin McBroom told Drama Alert. But in the Drama Alert video, he said that me and Ricky pulled up to his gym and were trying to film him while he was training. But that, that's not true We at all. never stepped foot never in the gym. We never stepped foot in the gym, and we never even saw Austin training, because literally this happened before Austin even made it into the gym. But that just goes to show you him lying about that, and then him lying about him being by himself, that he, li that he lies sometimes. And you guys know us, 
me and Nick, everything we've done, our whole YouTube career has been real. Everything, all the challenges you do, we've literally been arrested for some of the pranks and all challenges the pranks, you do. All pranks, all real. And I cannot say the same thing for Austin McBroom. I respect where he's at and gotten into his career, but at the end of the day, there are some videos that he's faked, and there's literally things that he's lied about. There's proof right there. So at this point, they're literally in our faces, chasing us down the block. We get around the corner, they all catch up to us. Ricky and Nick are standing there with like the six of them. I'm trying to back away and stand a little bit of, away from the group because I can see what now I know is Landon who's like trying to get around and like like lunge at me yeah. he does once I get away but pretty much they were all chasing us and backing us down to get to the footage and have us delete the footage they were making a bunch of threats yeah staring like literally staring me straight in the face saying like I'm gonna beat the shit out of you I'm gonna like like dude I'm gonna beat your ass right here in the street like don't let me get a hold of you like all this stuff like give me the fucking camera like your boys are in trouble if you don't give me that camera right now like you're literally, getting it right on the street right now literally a bunch of stuff like that and they were just spewing off and off for minutes like making a bunch of threats like threat after threat after threat like it's gonna go you guys are in serious trouble if you don't delete that footage like it's going down if you don't delete oh, the yeah footage. yeah it seemed like yo we are about to get jumped and we were outnumbered three to six or seven so it wasn't looking too good for us they were all up in me and ricky's face and luckily our boy evan was aware of that and he was trying to back away from the situation because he was the one holding the camera so he's trying to back away with the camera and then all of a sudden Austin McBroom's brother we didn't even know it was his brother at the time peel around the side of the group and he starts creeping closer and closer to Evan Evan sees that out of the corner of his eye Landon McBroom makes a run for it Evan sees him and bolts away he's like nah bruh you ain't getting the camera and then things just got more and more heated there was more yelling so, yeah, that, so Evan runs down the street keep in mind we're in the back alley while this is all happening and there's almost no witnesses back there besides us and them so it wasn't looking good Evan runs down the street and then I'm like yo we can get away so I start running but then I forgot Nick literally had a suitcase in his hand because we were all just walking around the streets with our stuff we had nowhere to go Nick had a suitcase he couldn't run so me and Evan get to the end of the block we turn around and we're like yo where's Nick Nick is back with them they surrounded him all they, six of them they surrounded me and they were just in my ear saying yo if you don't tell your boys to come back here with the camera we are gonna beat the living out of you and he's not gonna be good for you and I'm like yo bro what I was thinking in that moment was I didn't want to go to the hospital because it seemed like all those guys were down to take a charge for Austin and I was like yo bro I called Ricky I called Evan and I was like yo guys just come back delete the footage it's not worth it I don't want to die today that's literally what I said on the phone to them dude I'm at the end of the street with Ricky Nick calls me I pick it up I can like hear them in the background talking to Nick like threatening him so at this point I look at Ricky I'm like dude we have to go back I give the camera to Ricky we get back to the mob of the guys surrounding Nick and they're like screaming in our faces louder and louder than before and it was just so chaotic and I was like there's no chance we're getting out of this so they surround me they literally watch me delete every single clip on our camera and then we delete them all and, and yo I just have to make this clear why would they want us to delete footage if it didn't make them look bad like the stuff that we were exactly recording, it, uh, we were all we did was record Austin yelling and being hostile all and up in my face why would they want us to delete footage unless they know the truth of what they did and how it made them look and how they act truly off camera if, if they're if they're good with how they act off camera on camera if they're the same person and they're respectful there's no reason to delete the footage but they know that the footage we had was enough to like get them in some trouble and enough to really expose the truth about how they act and yeah. that's why they needed to get that footage they they knew that if that footage left we were gonna put that up and it was gonna go everywhere and they were gonna be exposed for the people they truly are off camera so they made sure they got it they literally watched me delete every single clip let me know their option it did not make them look good at all so that's why they had him delete it and then after they delete it we things started selling down for a minute we thought we thought we thought but then they're like yo check their phone so they go specifically up to Evan and then this happens so I'm, I'm sitting there, Ricky and Nick are still mobbed by like three or four people. The guy with the batons is on my left. Landon comes out of the group, grabs two massive handfuls of my hoodie and is holding me up like this. Holding him up literally in the air. Up in the air. Landon McBroom, Austin McBroom's brother, the one that got on the social gloves card, 
without even having to fight anyone, just randomly got in the car. I think you guys see where this is going. It just yeah. seems kind of weird. So they're choking Evan out. They're literally, they physically assaulted him. Not they, Austin, Austin McBroom's yeah, brother, Landon, Landon McBroom. McBroom. He was the one who physically assaulted and grabbed our cameraman Evan, and I'll let Evan tell the story. Yeah, two massive handfuls of my hoodie holding me up, and he's like, after this whole time, he's been yelling threats in my face. So he, now he has a hold of me, and I'm thinking like, all right, like, this is not gonna end well. He obviously is not afraid to grab any of us. He's not yeah. afraid to assault anyone, he literally just Clearly grabbed not. me. Yeah, while he has me, he's screaming at me and yelling, like, give me your fucking phone, like, show me your fucking phone right now, I need to see every, like, your whole camera album. So like, I'm trying to get my phone out as fast as possible, I've got the like, massive guy with batons on my left, and I'm trying to scroll through, he's like yelling at me, I'm showing him my camera roll, he finally lets go. So right after he lets go of me, I, I'm like, I'm pissed, I'm telling him like, yo, like get the hell off of me, like don't touch me, like what the f And then he lets go, they all go back to the group, I'm standing next to Ricky, I li I'm right next to Austin. He looks me straight in the eye and says, quit being a f Bro, and we're just like, nah. bro, dude, what? Your brother just had a hold of me. He's clearly not afraid to do anything. You had your whole squad of people, bro. If anyone is scared, it was you. If you were actually by yourself, there's no way you're coming up to us filming like that. And the only reason why you did that is because you knew you had six or seven of your buds come around and surrounded us, bro. I'm out here by myself. I'm out here by my fucking self. Ain't no one around me. We'll like, specifically never forget him looking me straight in the eyes and saying that to me. I'll never forget that. So after they witnessed Ricky delete all the things from our camera and they witnessed Evan's camera roll be completely clear, they finally let us go and then things calmed down a little bit. They pretty much just went their way. We went our way. We were still on edge because we literally thought we were like getting jumped right there or going to the hospital or something was going down. It got so intense so quickly too. Like no time to think about anything. Just right in the back of that alley, things got way more heated than they ever had to be. All that needed to happen was a conversation, man to man, me to Austin, but that couldn't happen. So this whole situation ended up happening, but it does not end there. It's just getting started because the next day we check Drum Alert, we check FoosieTube, who's reporting all the boxing news, and basically it comes out. Everyone thinks that we're cowards walking away. The clip of him saying, I'm by myself, showing all of us walking away. And we were like, bro, this makes us look so bad. This isn't even the full picture. This isn't even the full truth. So what we do is I go right on my Instagram, I piece together a little clip showing Austin saying he's by himself and then my angle showing him that he's with a bunch of his friends, six or seven of them, and I expose the truth. Right after I post that video, it starts going viral on TikTok. Literally a bunch of other people repost it, it starts going viral, everyone sees it. Bryce Hall even saw it. He reacted it. to it, he literally did a duet with it. And then Social Gloves hits us up and says, yo, you guys need to take that video down right now and we can see about maybe you guys getting on the card, we can work something out. So instantly we take it down because we still want it to be peaceful. We yeah. still think there's a way to solve this peacefully. Talk to Austin and say, yo, it was a just big misunderstanding. We forgive you, everything's chill. But as soon as we take it down, we start texting Social Gloves back, crickets. They don't say anything. So we wait like a day and I go, yo, I gotta tell the truth. It literally, we look so bad. We look like we're walking away. The truth is not getting painted. I post the TikToks again. They start going viral again. And then Social Gloves hits me up again and they're like, yo, I thought you guys were taking them down. Why you put them back up? And then I pretty much showed them, I was like, yo. You guys, you guys stopped responding. You guys said, yo, we can see about getting you on the card. We can get you to the event. And then after we did what you guys wanted, you just stopped responding. So they said, yo, take it down and we can talk. We take it down and then crickets again. They got what they wanted and then they just stopped talking, ignored us, and just were being so unprofessional about this entire thing. They told me that I was like the top runner up in case something happened to one of the fighters. So if, say, one of the fighters got injured, that I would be like the next up replacement. That's pretty much what they were telling me. I'll pop up some screenshots of it. And I'm like, yo, okay, that sounds good. So I'm still excited. I'm like, yo, maybe I'll have a shot to be in the card. And then weeks go by, no update. I text, I text uh, my contact at Social Gloves. I'm like, yo, what happened to Danny Duncan? Maybe I can fight the person Danny Duncan was fighting. I, I get like one reply and then he goes ghost. And then, and then I'm, I'm texting him more, I'm texting him more. Just absolutely no reply after no reply after no reply. It just all blew bubbles. Literally, they weren't responding to anything. Anything at all, man. It was just so disrespectful because all they wanted was for us to take down the videos we posted exposing 
the straight up truth that made Austin McBroom, his brother and his brother-in-law and Social Gloves look bad and as soon as they got what they wanted, they just Stop! Just disappeared. That's why we had to make this video, but that's not it, bro. That is when things get even more interesting because like I said, Social Gloves, they posted this screenshot saying they're adding six fighters to the card. They only ended up adding... Mm, what, four? four? At the time, they've only added two, and the first press conference is in a few days. And then on that day, we get a little notification from Social Gloves that they're adding Landon McBroom to the card. The man that put hands on Evan, literally grabbed him by the hoodie, assaulted him, yelled in his face, threatened him. That is the man that they're adding onto the card after telling me I'm next on the list. Landon McBroom didn't fight in any of the events leading up to it, just got placed on the card out of nowhere, and that's where we were like, yo, this is just straight up disrespect. We feel like Nick should've earned that first spot, and at the very least, should be the next one on the card, and you guys just put Landon McBroom right above him, and we were like, yo, we're done with this. So I tell Social Gloves that, I'm asking them, yo, why is Landon McBroom on the card? I thought you guys said I had a spot on it for next up. And we were trying to talk to them, tell them that Landon, physically assaulted our cameraman and saying, we don't want to make this video, we just want to work things out behind the scenes, but they ended up not responding send at them, all. Send them a whole long paragraph that were like, yo, we might press charges because of what happened. It was very serious what happened. Ghost. No response, they left it on scene. That's why we've come to this point of making this video because if Social Gloves isn't gonna be responding to us, talking about it, handling it professionally, then this is the only way to get the truth out there of what actually happened. And I think the people deserve to know the truth because Social Gloves was hoping they could just silence us, make us feel like we were gonna be a part of it, make us feel like we were gonna be at the event until after the event happened and then none of this matters anymore. But we had to make this before the event. Literally the event is next week. This is the full truth. You guys take it as you will. Everything Nick and I have done our entire careers has not been about drama. Everything we've done has been real. I cannot say the same for the McBroom family. You can see in this video, there's two instances of them lying straight up and it just seems a little bit fishy. Take this as you will. However you want to take this, these are the facts and that's just what we're saying. You come to your own conclusion though. We just had to make this video because the way we were treated pretty much from the jump of this whole thing, it was unprofessional, disrespectful after the whole situation. Literally almost got jumped by Austin McBroom, his brother, and no one, no one knew this whole side of the story because Social Gloves have been telling us, giving us that little glimmer of hope. They're like, yo, stay silent and you know, we'll, we'll consider giving exactly. you a spot on the card or something. The fight is in about a week and we've heard almost absolutely nothing. The only time we ever hear from them was when we posted something that made them look bad and they're like, yo, take that down, take that down because uh, we'll, maybe we'll get you a spot on the card. And they're just making a bunch of false promises. And the last thing that I want to say about this is, yo, why would Austin McBroom and them want us to delete that footage unless there was something on there that made them look bad and expose the truth of how they really act off camera. That's all I gotta say. We tried so hard to recover that footage. We literally paid thousands of dollars to get professionals to try and recover the footage. They weren't able to do that. Those are the facts. Austin, anyone who's watching this, you know that's the facts too. We're gonna leave it at that. You guys can make your own assumptions on who you think is in the wrong or the right. I think it's pretty clear from this video that the buds were in the right and uh, hopefully this is the first and last video that we have to make a about this situation on this channel. But if something else goes down, obviously we're gonna keep you guys updated. Subscribe to the vlog channel because that's where we've been keeping up to date with everything in way more detail. And take it as you will, guys. That's how it is, man. That's how it I, is. One more thing, one more thing. Team Bryce, baby. Please don't let us down, bro. Team Bryce and Team Cowboy Kale, baby. Let's go. And Team Ben as alert. Let's go. This is a very serious situation. Normally, we don't make videos like this. I don't really like being in the drama. It's just a headache, but this situation was so, so disrespectful. Our side was not getting out there, so we had to make this video. Take it as you want. We love you guys, and until next time, yee! Stand up for yourself.